Yo, what's up, everybody? CJ Harris here, the host of the Moto Stop Show, back at you for another week, another action packed show. Man, oh man, we got a lot to cover. I mean, a shit ton of stuff to cover. It went down in New York City. I had Woo. to bring my good friend in, the CEO of LiveRuthless.com, yes, back in, in studio again. Yes, sir, man. Carl Glad to be Rutledge. Back. Glad to be back, baby. The Moto Stop Show and Big Deal. Laid out the red carpet once again, and I came out to uh, be a big part of this thing. You're starting to grow, man. People starting to check on with us now here in Facebook Live. Y'all send us out there, share us, let everybody know we're out here, and uh, ask, ask us some questions, whatever you want to know tonight as CJ goes through the deal. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I don't know if you noticed that when we were talking back and forth, I kind of coined mm -hmm. you as the co-host now. So what? Yeah, you uh, you All might right. uh, you Woo, might be required job. to show up more often. <laughs> oh, I got a job, man. <laughs> more input. All right. So uh, yeah, kind of we'll sucker, kind of sucker them into it. Hey, Bobby Williams mm -hmm. from Pro Action Florida, yeah, already on buddy. with us. Um, we Turn got a few in. watchers. So, like Carl said, this is a brand new page for us on Facebook Live. Uh, you know, as always, you can find us at themotostopshow.com, our YouTube page. Uh, check out everything over at Big Deal Productions' YouTube page. Make sure you click subscribe, like. But if you guys could, help us spread the word right now because uh, brand new page. We need to share it, get it out there, and uh, break it down. So, Carl, before yes, we sir. jump into all the action, man, we're going to talk about New York, New Jersey Supercross. You call it New uh, York or New Jersey? Uh, New York. Yeah. New that's York. I'm going to you know, New York. No, it's the stadium too. for New York, you know. Yeah. Can't New put Jersey. nothing in there. Can't put anything back in that city again. No, you can't. Um, mm. It was like a damn full moon was out. Oh, and, I liked it. it was, I thought it was like amateur racing. It was. <laughs> it, was <laughs> it was amateur awesome. supercross and everything all put together. It reminded me of Daytona a couple years ago when it rained. Remember like a year or two I do, ago? I Daytona, do. It was like bumper cars. It was. <laughs> That's what it You know what it of. reminded me of when I was watching it? And I had to watch it Sunday, mm -hmm. so if you guys follow me on my personal Facebook page, you know I was like a fiend trying to ask everybody some questions. Um, took Moto to the Monster awesome. Jam on Saturday, so Woo. didn't get a chance to watch the race. However, when I watched it on Sunday, the first thing that I thought about was, you ever seen those like um, school buses that do the circle track yeah, and they figure demolition? Yeah, figure eight racing. Figure eight racing. pound into each other? Yes. Awesome. That's what New, that's what New York crazy. reminded me of. That was nuts. A demolition motocross Dragon race. Dragging riders along, bumping into each other in turns, <laughs> totally wiping out for no reason. <laughs> Tomac was a spode. He couldn't even ride. Like, oh, we're going mean, to get into that later, happened? but what, what happened, the man? hell happened? We got Robert Pixon on there from Team Taco Shack. They've been busy Woo! all week. Getting Tacos. ready for round It's Taco three. Tuesday, baby. It is Taco Tuesday. No, yes. it's Wednesday. No, today. What is today? Tuesday? It's Tuesday. It's been a busy week. I'm hey, telling you. you. A busy, you. busy week. I know uh, they just got done building some motors, getting ready for round three, which we're going to talk about later of the Florida Georgia Florida Motocross Series. Your weekend, you went out to a track. How was it? Went oh, took had, your nephew out? Oh, man, I had a great time racing the uh, the 50 with the nephew. My yeah. brother-in-law, Billy, was racing, so we had a great time. So, That's Man, awesome. I don't know how you guys do it, like the Moto Dad, especially if you race and you're a Moto Dad, because for like two days, I was completely worn out. Yeah, well... Uh, I got much more respect for the Moto Dads, and we'll yes. we'll probably break yes. it down. And you you know you were at Orlando, Moto and dads. man, my kid drove me crazy one yeah, race. I said I'm yeah. never gonna be that Moto Dad, never gonna do it. Melted and, down, boy. <laughs> the let Orlando me tell you, he sun pissed me off so bad. Woo. I didn't know what to do with myself. Yeah. Um, and then guess what? I spent all weekend building not my first race bike. I built many of bikes in my life, <laughs> many of motors. Moto bike. I built my first PW50 race bike, and that little <laughs> bitch is bad right now. <laughs> all right, so it's up to Moto now. Dad's got it ready, Moto. It is. It's time and for you to twist it, Just buddy. for clarification, twist we're all it. legal. Mom's been training. Yeah. Mom's been training them. I saw her in the yard training, so. Yeah, they went Good out today. Good luck to the Moto Stop team, man. They went out today. So, um. Frankie. He, yeah, Frankie Spicer from, hi, Frankie from Brandon, Florida. Welcome, dude. I'm freaking nuts, Robert Pixon, you are. So, uh, big shout out, obviously, you're a big supporter of ours coming into the show. A few sponsors, liveruthless.com. Make sure you check them out. Make, them, make sure you support them. I say it over and over. Yes, sir. They're a brand that supports the sport, man. If it yes, wasn't sir, for people like you and what you do for the, the community and keep the action mm. sports going, because you're not only in moto. I mean, you're in fishing, you're in skateboarding, you're you're along the whole way. Yeah, we're so getting into some other stuff, man. So we're you having are. Some fun. I love it. So we we thank you for being a loyal supporter of the show and actually a loyal supporter of mine for many many years. So uh, liveruthless.com, proud sponsor, as well as Loudmouth Intakes. You ever heard of those guys? Yeah, Loudmouth. 
Yeah, I got to give them a big shout out. Went down yeah, and uh, was at the factory yesterday. Oh, really? Uh, what are they into, man? They were making Harley night. parts or something last time he I talked to them. He may have been doing some work on a PW50 head for oh, me. Oh, <laughs> hey. So uh, <laughs> we we uh, me and uh, Justin down there and uh, Brendan and Loudmouth nice guys. Equipment. They do, man. They and they continue to grow. If you guys never checked out Loudmouth, make sure you check them out. Loudmouth Intakes. Uh, dot com, loudmouthmx.com. I guarantee you it's the best filter change ever for your bike. Give your bike some more power. It's like running a marathon with a bag over your head. You wouldn't run your, your bike that way. So put yourself a loudmouth on and get hooked yeah, up great. and dialed in. So there's Pixton asking you about the KTM boys right there. Let's talk about the KTM boys. Well, Robert, you're going to have to wait just a little bit Oof. before we dive into that because we're going to break down the 250 class first. Right. We're also going to talk about some 450s. Um, we got our Grind MX. You ever heard of this website? Oh, yeah, man. Jim Arbo guy. This is his little website, you yeah, know. Yeah, you know. Old, old Arbo Nasty, man. <laughs> I, remember so when I, he, I remember when old Arbo Nasty first came around. He loves motocross. He does. And that, and that's what uh, Grind MX is all about. And that's the cool thing about Jim Arbo guys. He doesn't make any money. He does it for the love of motocross. He's a cool guy. Grew up kind of out in the desert. Yep. You know, riding dirt bikes in the desert and uh, transformed that on to his uh, Jim Arbogast photography. And, yeah, we love Grind MX, man. We do. Great so uh, something cool. Make sure you stay tuned and find out who our Grind MX rider is because I actually made Grindr. Jim pick out the pick rider. Up. And I said, you pick anybody you want, and I'll talk about it. We also got Damian Plotz, our official Woo! trainer in the house. So uh, Damian Plotz, another supporter of the show. Yes. you got to stay tuned. Man. To check, check out the Plotz MX training tip of the week we're going to get to all that and much much more here in episode i don't even know we've been going so long i think it's episode 24 cranking them out cj 20 20 20 19 20 hot cold 21 hot, cold 22 we've had some episodes 20 we're on 22 23. episode 22 officially Chad Ray. of the moto stop show um and that was probably a great live video there so uh once again brand new page if you guys could help us out share it share it share it Let's dive into 250 action, man. New York Supercross. Before we talk about 250, yes. let's talk about the track itself. Take the riders Gnarls. off the track. Gnarls. Yes. What did you think of the track in itself? It the was... obstacles, the layout, the whole nine yards. And I want your opinion. We haven't talked about this because I'm going to tell you my opinion. And my opinion is the only one that really matters. <laughs> so I don't really even know why I'm asking you. But go so ahead. Let me, let me give my opinion real quick. Yeah. But I thought... I really, I liked the course a lot. I thought it was very challenging. It didn't have the same dirt consistency, and I thought that was the difference between, you know, the last couple of weeks and now. You couldn't really uh, gas it. You had to be patient. You know, you had to be on the gas, but you had to really be patient. You know, you, were, you, had, uh, you had throttle control being a big factor there. You had ruts again, and a, a totally different track surface than, than we've had in the weeks prior. I, I I agree, agree with you wholeheartedly. All right, thanks, Damien. Damien was letting us know it didn't look clear, um, so he says it's fixed now. We're good to go. All right, so my my opinion, and again, this is the only one that matters. When I first looked at the track preview, I'm like, <clears throat> ah, I don't, tight. Yeah, tight. Yeah, it's tight. gonna be boring. It's not gonna lend to good racing. Um, it was tight. But then when the, I watched the race, you, you noticed it in the heat races because the, racing was the good. shit that was happening the racing was, good. was amazing. It took me back to 1990s Supercross where My shit My wife was, doesn't even watch it, and she goes, what's going on? Yeah, it, <laughs> havoc. That's what was going on, <laughs> havoc. So back to 1990s Supercross, when stuff was technical, not everybody can do it, um, whether it was... Back then, it may have been the power in the bikes. Today, it may have been ruts in the, the, the track, but that's what I like. I mean, it gets very boring for even a casual fan to watch every bike come out of the corner, third, rah, triple, rah, going to the loops, fourth gear. Rah, 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 rah. How many Supercross races have you been in, CJ? Um, like physically in my head or there? But we're not even talking about being in the race. Damian Plotz, our former pro, our Plotz MX Tech Tips trying to call me out. I'm just telling you about my opinion as a fan spectator and a commentator to the sport. Um, looking from the outside in, this race here was what I've been looking for the entire season. 
great bar to bar racing action. Some of it being more smashing and crashing than racing in itself. Yes. But to come together and to see, I mean, we're going to get into this, so I don't even want to elaborate mm. on it, but just take this perfect example. The top in this sport right now, the number three, Eli Tomac, not able to do a triple. Not only is he not able to do the triple, he cases the double in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he had a horrible night. What the hell? He was off. You could watch every rider on the track struggle, struggle. at some point struggle. in time. And then somebody like Moose came. Moosekin did do phenomenal. Well. Do well. We all Some of your 250 riders did even, well, too. Even Moosekin made a mistake yes. no. uh, in the last corner, so I don't know if that was obvious Whoops. as well as his pull-off, but, yeah, um, we're going to talk about that. the shift, bro. What was with Grant and Stewart. All right, so let's dive into the 250s. Yes, sir. You got some 250 results right there. Zach Osborne comes away with the lead. Um... Of the race, and, and another solid ride by Zach. You know, come off, I think he was 10th or 11th out of the out of the start, and uh, busted his ass to get to the front of the pack and put in a solid ride. What did you think of Zach's ride? Man, that, he's, he's a ripper, man. He's the fastest kid in that class. It's going to be... It, he's going to lose this championship, I believe, to his, his mistake. If he loses the championship this year in the next race, it's going to be because, you know, he made a mistake. He did something wrong. The bike fails him. Yeah, I think it's Zach Osborne's championship to win. He, he's definitely the most the fastest racer. Savachi's a little hurt right now. And, uh, you know, Jordan Smith's just young. Now, I, I'm, I'm hanging off the fence for Jordan Smith. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I, I want Jordan Smith to ride the wheels off, brother, and, you know, bring us home a championship. But, uh you know, Zach Osborne is just tried and true. He's been in the class for I don't even know how long, you know. So, I mean, he, he, he definitely, he'll lose it for himself if he loses. Absolutely. So, I wrote on my notes here, Zach Osborne, best rider all day. Oh, yeah. And I'm By including far. the 450 rider. That's what I was going to say. That he, he rode better than the 450 rider. Him and Moosekin. Moosekin put in a solid ripping. ride. They were ripping. But I go back and I watch the rides and I... I look at him and I'm, I'm like, very <clears throat> flawless, um, very focused, hit his marks. I heard somebody says, well, I don't take Zach as a, a rut rider. I mean, obviously he, he rode friggin' flawless, so right. he's, he's got the skills to pay the bills for sure. Um, so he, he was my pick of the day, and he was the best rider to me. Out and of, uh, Fernandez as well. See, that, Dylan. that track kind of played into more of that, you know, the the – overseas kind of style of the more rougher track and it's more beat up a little bit for some of these guys that were used to maybe a more groomed track or you know, I, yeah. a little bit sandier consistency and you know some of these european guys are really able to struggle when it, when the going gets tough they uh, prevail sometimes and you see him right in the second spot right there right ahead of uh, smith and cianzarello absolutely so joey savacci Ooh. second place was leading the race got passed by osborne settled in Thought he was uh, had a huge gap. And I don't know if you've seen this or if you 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 heard about it, but he goes down in the rhythm section, and when he goes down, yeah, he cuts the track a little bit. He cuts the track. He goes off to the right hand side. Now the best I I wasn't there. I only did it on TV. I got a little over six seconds. Um, cuts is, a lane basically is what I calculated how far he cut off. Yeah, he six cuts seconds. a he cuts a lane. Heard some other interviews today say seven seconds. So whatever, split the difference six and a half seconds. Big penalty for that. Huge <laughs> penalty. <laughs> Not a position. Well, he says we're getting blurry again. So uh, we're trying to work through it. We don't know if it's the new page or what. Um, bear with us, but let us know. We see all your all your comments down there, questions. Uh, Damien Plot says 44 all the way. Yes, You're a little sir. bit biased, JP. so I can't really take that. Oh, no, just Jordan. kidding. Jordan's ready. Um, if it is a little blurry, guys, it may be your internet connection because we have a few different uh, channels. We have actually an iPad over there. We have a TV here. We have two phones going Crystal. up there that are monitoring, and it's actually clear on our side. Padano just buzzed in. So, uh, Fly by. I like what you did. Padano <laughs> just buzzed in. I like it. I like it. So, uh, Joey Savacci, nice way to knock the camera. Buddy. Cut his head off. So... That's our film crew back there. My for hair's you. so good, man. Let them uh, know. Uh, 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 getting shaky. Yeah, hey. Shaky with it. <laughs> so, uh, Joey Savacci does cut the track. 
the AMA came out with an official penalty that said you get docked five positions Oof. from where you finished the Oof. race. I mean, did he cut the whole track? <laughs> it was pretty steep. Ouch. All right, so we got a few people on here. We're talking about Joey Savacci's penalty, whether you know what happened or not. He cut the track. He cut about a lane off the track. About six and a half seconds is what he missed. Um, AMA docked him five positions from where he finished. Let us know right now on Facebook Live if you guys agree. Are we live on Instagram over there? What's up, Instagram? Big Dope Productions Woo, page. Kramer. Welcome to the Moto Stop Show page. We, uh, I know we got some viewers over there. We got Freeze, Dave Freeze. Dave, make sure you share us. The 109, how's the your whole shot family, going? whole family, man. We should get like five or six shares from we Freeze, We got Owen man. Pixton over here, Robert Pixton over here. We got yeah, everybody we got the, everywhere. We got the cool kids over here, man. You know, the, uh, uh, the young kids. Are All right, so here. Robert Pixton said, not cool for him. Whoa. But do you think it was justified? Well, I mean... I, I think I think you look back at the seconds, and you know whoever finishes there, you know you put them in the next spot. You know, like if the next rider six seconds the section, you know. Okay. Kind of do the math real quick. I mean, they had time to do it. Which is what they did before. Thanks, po po Dog. We got NDA Action Sports on here, Poi Dog. Yeah, he knows the business. He does, man. And uh, <laughs> really cool. I forgot to give you a shout out as soon as we started. So yes. we're gonna do it throughout the day. It's on my notes. <clears throat> but make sure you check out the Weekend Race Report, um, NDA Action Sports. Really cool thing. We kind of joined guys. up. I just found out his, his show. He found ours. We kind of came together hoping to uh, collaborate and share each other's show and, and grow together. So um, he's on watching. And uh, it was, and you can't, Robert Pixon says it was, and you can't argue with that. It was steep. It was steep. So Free what's says up, what's up over there. All right, so. Here's my thoughts, and I guess I got to take you back before I learned about, before I, I listened to other people, okay? So I like to evaluate the situation with, you know, other people's thoughts, because obviously my thought, even though I believe it's the correct one, may not always be the best one. True. So I thought, I holy believe that. cow, I know you do. <laughs> this penalty is absurd, all right? Right. So, you know, I agree with you, six seconds. You know what? I think you could even double the. Yeah, okay, 12. six seconds, double it, 12 seconds. Let's put him in line where he's at. I don't have the, the lap charts in front of me, so I don't know. Back. It wouldn't have been that far back. I don't think he's going to fall into eighth place where he, no. they, they posted him. But no. listening to uh, Jason Wygant, the yes. voice of American Motocross, yes. um, he made a very valid point. He goes, you know, when, when the AMA comes up with these penalties, they have to make it where. It's if, a sting. It's going to sting. And if you have the, the reasonable doubt, you know what? If Joey Savacci says, hey, they're only going to penalize me six seconds, I'm it may be it. worth taking a chance cutting this track than going back the right way. True. He's going to do that True. every time. Yeah, they know what they're doing. So uh, after listening to Jason Wygant, and, uh, you know, I, I like a lot of stuff he said, it clicked in my head a lot different. I said, you know what? I, I agree. And I'm a Cali guy. So it sucks. It's a hard blow for Kawasaki, but hmm. man, it uh, it sucks for Joey Savacci. And I think you just got to use your brain, you know, a little more and and yeah, go right, it out. go right back into the track where you came off, you know. Yeah, next safest place. Yeah. So, all right. So your official order as finished is the number sixteen Zach Osborne, our leader, as we talked about, with an amazing ride. The one hundred eight Dylan Fernandez uh, coming through. I think the best finish of charging. his uh, yeah, just charging. best finish of his career here. Um, Jordan Smith, a third place finish, a podium. So mm -hmm. do you know what that does for the points? It puts them raw right there in line, a, a point away. It does. So Jordan Smith is now <coughs> our official points leader going into Vegas. Yes. Leading by one point. Come on, Jordan. You got Zach Osborne. Don't give it up. And Joey Savacci tied in second place for a, with 159 Savacci, points. Savacci, man, he's hurt, but I'll tell you what, that's the hungriest kid ever. And Osborne's got to win it. So what do you do? It's like roll the dice. Let's go to Vegas. Let's roll the dice. Let's, I'm betting on seven. Let's do it. You know? like, <laughs> lucky number, you know what I mean? Well, you only bet on seven if it's Ooh. on the come out roll, okay? All right. So you're teaching me here. So yeah, because if the numbers are It's time for on, me to go to Vegas, apparently. Buddy Bass, what's up, bro? How you Woo! been? Man, Finally taking up a Buddy new Bass, uh, sport, man. shooting some pictures. 
Yes, I've sir. been following along. He's the next big thing, buddy. Bass. He is. He's going to be all over. Um, so we got Troy Collar over there on our uh, Instagram. <coughs> and the My little homie, boy. the number nine nine one Ryan Gardner. Buddy, what is up, Ryan Gardner? So uh, going into Vegas. Yes, sir. I, I know I've asked this a question a hundred well, times. Last year earlier, we're mixing the other guys into it now. We're mixing your. We are. We are. So we're going to get to that. We're going to get to the West Coast. We're going to talk about that. But Mike Larocco, Joey Wright, Rock. what's going on? The Rock. So yeah, what's the Rock? Up the to? manager of Honda, Geico Honda, the 250 team. He had Jordan Smith on his team last year, who was an up and coming prodigy. <coughs> was me. a great amateur rider. Right. Was going to be the next big thing. And never really fulfilled his needs at the Geico Honda. No. Whether it was his decision, Geico's, they decided to split ways. And he jumps over on this KTM team. Good team. And it's been, I mean, balls out since. Now, going into the last round, leading the points. If you're Geico, what are you saying? Because let's let's look down the list here. So you're you're on the East Coast, and we're just going on the East Coast here. <coughs> Your first Geico Honda rider comes in at, in sixth place in the points. Christian as Craig. Christian too. Craig. That was the hopeful. What? I mean, you just gotta be scratching yourself, scratching your head, kicking yourself and What's going, the what the one? hell? Where's the next one? Uh way down. Yeah, I don't even see anybody. So yep, that all fell to pieces there. Hampshire. RJ 19th. RJ Hampshire, 19th. So, wow. Yeah, you're exactly right. I'm sure somebody's uh and how we let Jordan Smith slip away. Yep. I think Cameron McAdoo is on that team now. Uh, the 128 Cameron McAdoo. But he was when they started on Moto Concepts. Team Mortberg on. What's up? Boy Dog says, Ruth, uh, Rutherford left me cross-eyed. Crazy fun. <coughs> Excuse me. Dude, we, we said the same exact thing. I it loved awesome. it. Every bit of it. I liked it. Every bit of it. I thought it was cool. All right. So... Jordan Smith leading the points. We covered that. Joey Savacci's hectic battle. Um, I told you my thoughts on it. I, I think the the penalty was okay. Uh, you got to do what you got to do. You're for right. The you're AMA. right. You know, you got to set the bar. Yep. Zach Osborne, the rider of the day in my eyes. Yeah, he's a all day player. long. Like you say, faster than the 450s. What about the Florida boy, well, Adam Centurilla? I mean, I've expected him to win a championship now over and over again. I mean, just to be honest, I thought he was going to, you know, revolutionize the sport and, you know, take it off. And, man, you talk about string of bad luck. Well, he is. But, I, I mean, so he's he's also been very solid this year. You know, he got a win this year, which is not like he started out. If you remember his first six races in Supercross, his win streak was 50%. He won three out of the first six. Now, he's only won one since, which was Daytona, which is far from a Supercross track. However, here's what I noticed from Adam Cincerilla. Four years in the rookie class, I do believe, uh, he's been more consistent, more controlled, and he's finishing races this year. So, he's sitting fourth in the Monster Energy Supercross points, where most, most years, yes, 100% of the yeah. years he's been racing, he hasn't been able to finish a season. Yep. So, I mean, he's just becoming a veteran now. He's learning. Yes. Very smart. He was sitting in second place for a while. He uh, he got passed and uh, heard and said he got freight trained and he, he lost pace of the, the front runners. He wisely, I think, backed it down and came in what would have been a fifth place finish on the track, but fourth place, fourth place finish with the uh, official results. So, you know, not on the podium. He's not happy. I know he said he thought he could win over there, but uh, he didn't get it. We got Team Sheehan <coughs> over there on our Instagram. Yes. So we appreciate all you guys. We see you guys jumping on here. Once again, if you guys got something you want us to talk about, throw it up. Let's talk about it. Hey, before we get out of the 250, how about Cartwright? Did you see him tacoed at rim? Josh Cartwright? I don't think I did. Look finished that, man. He tacoed his rim, bro. Really? Yeah, he was old taco. -er. Old Cartwright, brother. We love you. He didn't didn't he get that. into it with somebody? Man, he's he's always into something. We love Cartwright. Dude, I think he got he's into a smash and crash times. battle with somebody. Yeah, well, you know, that's all I we love do. it. I that's love it. That's what we do. College boy. Yeah. Yes, sir. Keep them grades up, son. So, uh, anybody Mark else? Gone it or again in all debt? Cameron McAdoo actually on that Geico ride. Mitchell. Put in a Mitchell Harrison, brother. 
Absolutely. 13th, Mighty Mitch. Paul Coates, number fifth, uh, in the 15th place there, number 40, uh, yeah, Paul 65. What good. the hell? Henry Miller, Nick Gaines. So, a lot of, lot of good ride, a lot of good actions going on there. Mark Miller, what's up? What was your favorite part? Everybody on our Facebook Live, and how about over on our Instagram? What was your favorite part of East Rutherford Supercross, New York Supercross? All right, so we covered the 250 classes, and once again, we got to thank all of our sponsors to make it happen. Live Ruthless, Loudmouth, we got the Moto Stop, we got Big Deal Productions, we got a lot of people backing us. Brian Tipton, BBTMX. BBTMX. Where so is proud of that Big kid. Brian at? Man, Brian's over at Double W. He has opened up a shop for the public now, so if you ever want to get your uh, bikes dialed in, uh, you know, pro status, you want to call Brian over there, man. Brian Tipton, BBTMX, look him up, Facebook, Instagram. Twitter, he's got everything. He's uh, got him a little stable over there at Double W now, man. Sweet. Full blown shop. And he does full blown like race ready prep. He does I like just pure pure maintenance prep. He does all <coughs> kind of stuff. So I mean, if you're not going to you know Las Vegas finals, then you may not need it. But you never know. You you might not have a spoke wrench. I mean, everybody can go tink 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 tink, but you really need to sp tighten your spokes with a spoke wrench. You really need to have a professional mechanic look at your bike every once in a while. Definitely. So make sure you Makes check them difference. out, BBTMX for sure. Yes, we got uh, Logan Morberg. I don't know if you just or Logan John on there just said yeah, they're that they're they're heading to Vegas. They got uh, Gurky MX School Gary right, Gurky man. taking them out there. Beef um, Gurky right there, son. That's beef. It is. That's big beef. He's gonna take his shirt off. I promise you that. Hey, see who just joined? <laughs> who Jake? Man, Jake bring us Rickers! a sandwich, brothers. Man, I want a big one. Home with a big one right there, man. Hey, we should call Jake out because I didn't even know this. Somebody told me when I was checking in my hotel. <coughs> yes, sir. Larry's Giant Subs. Yes. No, no, no. What's the other one? I don't know. Jimmy John's. <clears throat> Jimmy John's had subs for a dollar today. Well, full, you know, they can give they can give them away because they taste like crap compared to a That's Larry's what I told the lady. Sub. They do. I told the lady. I'm gonna be straight up right there. I like Jimmy John's for one fact. They sponsor Ryder D. Francisco. Other than that, their sandwiches and all that. I do like the bread. Larry's Giant, well, Larry's like Giant bread. subs bread and everything in between it. But their meat the doesn't compare. No, it sure doesn't. To the Rakish Farm meat that you no. get at Larry's Giant subs. And I'm not just saying that. I mean, honestly. No, they're good, man. I I've, eat there all the time, so. I, I mean, I've, Larry's Giant sub, I'm not sure. They gotta be a 25 year old company. And I mean, I, I can remember Jake, being a how kid. Jake, old, how old is the franchise of Larry's Giant Subs? I can I, remember being a kid and, and begging my mom, Mom. Really? Mom, yeah, oh, yeah, to go See, to Larry's Giant Subs. I'm Sub, new to it. Right around the corner from my house on Atlantic Boulevard, Atlantic and uh, Arlington Road. Yeah. It, it, it's been long closed, you know, the uh, that location, but I guarantee you that was one of their original locations right there. I'm new to it, but uh, another, another brand that supports the sport, not only do they back Jake Rakus's program, but they also spend money on advertising, yes. um, run commercials during Supercross. You know, they sponsor a bunch of local series. So another very cool company. Supporting the sport that they love. They do. They um, like motocross. They put their money where their where their heart is. You know. So big shout out to the whole Rakus team over yeah, there at Larry's Giant them. Subs, Mitch and everybody else. John Moorberg says Logan was sure to pack his ruthless shirt and Moto Stop shirt for the trip. No, you know, Be sure brother, to go represent some for us well, man. Logan's gonna do well. Logan's a ripper. Good thing because we were gonna find you, Logan, if you didn't have your Moto Stop shirt on. It's <laughs> gonna uh, call you right out, buddy. That kid represents everywhere he goes. All right, so um, you guys ready to break <clears throat> down and talk about some 450? Oh, definitely. That's Havoc. what everybody want to talk about. Every, I know. I, I just been stringing them on. You see what I'm doing there? Yeah, dangle, dangle. Dangle. It said, look, it says 450s right here. Can you guys see it? Oh, too bad. All right. So uh, here on the Moto Stop Show with Carl Ruthless in studio, as always, I'm CJ Harris, your host. We thank all you guys. Uh, Jake Rake is before I finish my sentence. Jake Rake <coughs> gives us an answer. Damn. He says, thank you guys, and it's been 35 years wow. um, and going strong. So I'm 44, so. Yeah. I'm telling you, since I was 11 years old, Larry's Giant Bro, so, you're old as hell. I'm, I'm ancient, bro. I'm ancient. Damn. Ancient. So just a baby ro rolling by all those Larry's Giant subs, man. Absolutely. All right. So, uh, you know, we enjoy all this stuff. We got to talk about up on the list of 450s. Yes, sir. All right. Before we talk about anything, I want to know your highlight of the 450 class and your disappointment. 
<clears throat> highlight of the 450 race, the main and, event. And just so you guys know, I don't forewarn him of any of this, so I get his true insight. Oh, Got to kind of come up with it. It was probably Josh Grant knocking the piss out of Malcolm Stewart. Ah! That was probably my highlight. Oh. <laughs> it was pretty good stuff. What? Damien says easy now, CJ. Oh. Easy. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about age there. Took me for a second. I had to <laughs> point yeah, on. Yeah, that's not old, 45 bro. is not or 44 I'll is not I'll take care old. of him later off camera, guys. You know, don't call him out, man. Hey, I'm telling you what. Sometimes when you race these plus 50 classes and the guys are smoking you, I realize. Hey, Perry McCarty. Woo! -hoo! Go and get you a piece of that guy. Dude, Iron Man right there. God, he is such a How about an Keith Orridge? Yeah, Ulrich too, man. Ulrich, Shit. man. 58, brother. Good God. Yeah. All right, so back back to we're dude, we're so sidetracked today, it's not even funny, but we're having a good time. We hope you guys are having a good time with us. 450. Grant. Josh Grant, Malcolm Stewart. Come All right. On. So let me walk stands. you guys through this. See ya, Mookie. They come through the rhythm section. Yeah, he knocked his curls out, bro. He did. I think what happened. Is when he Mookie was in front, Mookie got crossroaded a little bit and started looking over, jumped into Josh Grant's lane. I think that made Josh Grant a little pissed off. Yeah, he said, I'm happy living in the now, bro. You got to go. But go back to this wasn't a race, it was a <laughs> crash and smash, okay? What the hell was he thinking? Nothing. He almost he rode aimed, it out. He aimed for the front tire and then he turned. <laughs> yeah, he turned off Mookie. All right, you so. Know. If you guys haven't seen it, when Josh Grant comes inside, he literally blows Mookie's tire straight up in the air like this. Mookie off the bike. Bye-bye. And then, I like, I thought Mookie, I really wish he would have. It looked like he was trying to grab was onto over, Josh Grant's dude. It arm. Was over. What if he got a hold of Grant he punted and it. ripped it, him it, down it, to the it, ground? It would have been better. And it would have been better. Yeah. Yeah, it would have been super. Yeah. Super. And then the Predator just stands above Josh Grant like, I own you. And then just like, that's what I was really wishing would happen. That was good stuff. But <coughs> Mookie goes down. Josh Grant goes about another 10 feet and wads it in the sand section. Yes. All right. So that was your, what was that? Your highlight or your disappointment? That was my highlight. I mean, I, I, I loved it. What's your disappointment? Marvin Muscane pulling over. I wanted Muscane to take it home to the whole team, man. All right. You know? Yeah. You know? I mean, so, you know, if I got a snap on wrench in my hand. I like where you're going with this. I don't even know what you're doing you know, with it. You, you know what I'm saying? I, I got a snap on wrench in my hand. I love snap on. Best tool ever made. I agree. I you concur. You know what I'm saying? I got a Matco guy just busting my balls over here, you know? And he, he passes me, but then I got, you know, we got Bo going to knock me in the back of the head real quick. <laughs> Cut me off at the pass, not to let the bat go, guy. <laughs> go right around me, you know? Like, I wanted Muscade to win that thing. And I think he could have won it. I believe he missed the shift on purpose. Uh, Poy Dog says, who was the one that got hooked up in the rear of the bike just before oh, the finish Intercamp line? Camp and something That was else? Tyler Intonap, the number 723 with... Uh, oh, good stuff, though. That's drag along. 250 class. Ding! I'm drawing a blank. But that would have been... So Tyler Internet, just for you guys, has never made a Supercross main in his entire life. He was okay? going to make that one. He was in fifth place in the heat race and was going to make it until that guy's leg got in the back. I don't know about you guys, but I'd have been shifting to fifth gear and holding it wide open with that guy he, I, he tried. Out the back. He tried. And then he, he hey, didn't buddy. try hard He's enough. like, hey, buddy. <laughs> hey, buddy, my, my leg's in there. We're, we're not going to make it over the I'd have been like, I'd have been like, I can't see you. Oh, it was bad. We got T up on here with us. Here in Moss, baby. Jo uh, John Morberg said, then Grant flipped off Mookie, too. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was. Uh, They're both big boys. That was awesome. I mean, that was my highlight. That has been a hell of a bra. We're still talking about it, you know. Who do you take in a fight? Josh Grant or Josh Malcolm Grant will whoop that ass. <laughs> what? Yeah, Josh Grant, I mean, he's a man. He's a man. Malcolm Stewart. He's is, a man. Whoa. He's Malcolm Stewart. He's we put gloves on. He does. We put gloves on. Yeah. Yeah. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's line that let's, up. Let's, let's sell line tickets that up, to boys. a sideshow let's for do that. fights. Let's do it. All right, you think we can get them yeah. going? Yeah. I think we could get that going. We'll try. That's just a let big you know. ticket item right yeah, there. Yeah, just let you know they're not Las too Vegas cooperative. Supercross. You should hear, see them trying to get back to do interviews on shows and shit. It's the, they got shit to do. Yeah, <laughs> I'm sure. All right, 
So um, my highlight of... What was your highlight, CJ? My highlight of the night, there were so many of them, but it's probably gonna be Ronnie Stewart going backwards through the whoop section yes. with 600 of his fans. friggin' fans, yeah. all in yellow shirts, screaming up in the crowd. Have you ever seen his rig? No. They call him a privateer, but his rig is nicer than the pros. Yes, I have, yes I have. Yeah. He's definitely got some some help. Somewhere. Some support. Yeah, he's not the normal privateer. They're not showing up in a box van. No. no. And he made the main. Well, I mean. He made the main after getting punted off a track, <laughs> going backwards. Um, Woo. Jake Weimer, I believe, was coming through the whoops. Adam. And going backwards at him and literally passed right there at the end, uh, straight up the, the finish line. Make the main. So congratulations, Ronnie Stewart. That was a sick ride. All right. So let's Stewie. let's talk about this. Let's do it. Hey, can I get my phone real quick? So, you know what? Before we get into the KTM, and here's something I want you guys to think about on here. KTM orders. Yes. Don't want you guys to answer yet, but get your thoughts ready. Do you think KTM gave orders to Marvin Muskan? And if you did, are you okay with it? Are you okay with how it played out? If not, tell me why in your comments. Now, why we're doing that, we're gonna do the Plot to MX tech training tip of the week. All right, buddy. So, big shout out to Plot to MX. You guys can see them on here and live in the chat. And if you have another question that uh, you may want to ask him about training, um, anything, make sure you put it down there. We'll read it out. He can see it as well, and he'll be back in the studio very soon. Don't forget, he is training out at Bosswick Creek MX Park. Uh, you can find him at PlotsMX.com. Uh, at Starts, Plots burns, MX. whoops, and turns. He's got it all. Starts, turns, whoops, and burns. He's got it all, you know? Look at you. <laughs> Tammy and Plots. You're a poet and didn't even know it. He's awesome, man. He's definitely got it going on. Rick Viper. Rick Viper Moto. Three different people or all the same one? Rick Viper Moto. There Get we go. All right, 17 should have done <coughs> the same. Sabachi? All right, so here we go with the plots training tip of the week, okay? Plots MX training tip of the week is learn the proper position of the ABCs of motocross through trainers or just practice. Attack. Now, I like this tip a lot. T Lane, we got a local Woo! pro over there. Make sure you listen up, Tristan. We're talking about training tips of the week. Um, that was something in there, Tristan. It's He's got A, something B, for us. and C of the motocross through a training or just through practice. A, acceleration. Yes. B, braking. Yes. C, cornering. Yeah, that's it. One, two, three. Very ABC. simple. So he elaborates a little bit for us, and it says this. Each one has some similarities. Knees tight, looking ahead, re-gripping the throttle, finger on the clutch, elbows up and out. All right? Your weight and your seat position should be forward except in braking position. When braking, you should be standing with your weight and back, have a solid arm position, applying both brakes evenly but not locking up. Your upper body form will, if correct, keep you from falling into the handlebars. Master the A, B, and Cs of MX, and you will lower your lap times each ride. All these tips are covered in details if you come to the Plots MX coaching session. So make sure you guys, even if you know what, even if you don't ever plan on taking a training class, Make sure you go over and say thank you to Damien or, or give him a like on his Facebook page or, or say something, you know. Yeah, we appreciate these tips. You know? Absolutely. He spends time going through these, developing them, writing them down for us. And, and if you don't believe him, we got some pros over on Instagram watching. I'm sure Tristan Lane will tell you the same exact thing as uh, maybe not in the same exact words, maybe not with the same exact formula. But these pros all ride very, very similar, may have a little different riding style. Let yeah, me break it's a this formula. It's a ABC formula. down for you, okay? Very simple. So this past weekend, I was riding uh, Saturday. I did some uh, motos on my turn track at my house. And I was out there, and I was motoing down. And I felt like I was getting going pretty good. And I said, well, hey, 
Let me slow down and I want to work on something. So I want to moto without using my, my back brake. Now I'm on a turn track. So a lot of things go on. Front brake, you're using to hold you into a rut, you know, possibly or, um, keep you in the rut. So I said, I'm not gonna use my back brake at all. And I did two laps. The first two laps with just my front brake were faster than any laps I was turning at all because I was focused on what I was doing. My body position was correct. As I was going in, I was trying to counterbalance my weight so I wouldn't wash my front end out. When I was going in with my back brake and coming in hot, a lot of times I'm locking my back brake up, Setting sliding. The yeah. So slowing down. Techniques. Techniques. Yep. The A, B, and C. Right. I love that, Damien. Acceleration, braking, and cornering. Yep. Right there from a former pro, factory rider, Damien Plotz himself. Yeah, like um, I said, you do those three things, you're guaranteed to shave some lap times. You're going to do something. Guaranteed. Going to do something, for sure. All right. So, Tristan, good stuff, Damien. Knowledge is power. Yes, sir. So, Tristan Lane, Lightning Lane over there. Woo! The number 11 in our hearts. What was he on the... 868. 868. And your program, um, giving Damien Damien Plot some uh, some uh, training or some kudos there. Training at Waldo, what's up, boys? Bubba Moody out at Waldo right now. John Mortenberg says have seen great results with Damien. He's a very positive trainer. Love the feedback. All right. So uh, right now is the time. We want your thoughts, comments, concerns on the 450 debacle. The misshift. The misshift. The <laughs> Ryan Dungey out front leading his training partner, his teammate. Partner in crime. Partner in crime. Passing him. Whoops. Leading. I forgot how to ride. Leading Whoops. majority of the laps. Let's see here. Marvin Muskin led 13 laps. The very last lap. Whoops. He messes up in a rut. <laughs> and Ryan Dungey. I think Mortberg, uh, I think is who commented earlier, said, yeah, the mechanic told him on that last lap, hey, bro. You know, All he right, gave, so. He gave him that the signal of Prince on the pit board. You know, that was like the. Well, it, the, wink, the, pit board, the pit board actually said, Dungey, one lap, is what wow. the pit board said. <laughs> yeah. John Mortberg right there says, KTM was involved in my eyes. Robert Pixton says, ha, ha, ha. So I want to break this down a little bit. Uh, and, and just so, uh, you know, I see a lot of great friends on Facebook talking about this. I may make you mad. I don't really care. But this is my opinion, and I'm going to give it to you. You guys should know that by now. So KTM hires these people to win championships. Yes. One goal in mind, it doesn't matter if it's a number one bike, a number five bike, uh, what is Marvin Muskin? A number 25 the bike? The title. KTM wants the title. They don't really care who's on that bike at the moment. No. So, it's expected, maybe not ordered, but expected. Right. You can say that. For team tactics. They might not have the actual conversation, but they had a couple wink winks. So, that's my thoughts. Now, here's how it goes. For Roger DeCoster to say there was no team orders... I'm just going to go ahead and say right now, that's bullshit. Yeah. Here's why. Marvin Muskin's mechanic wrote on the board, Dungey one lap. Everybody's seen it, okay? Yeah, like, don't mess up, bro. He's got one lap to get around you. Devin O'Neill Chandler says, love the Facebook video, guys. It's very easy and convenient. Thank you, guys. As always, this is a brand new channel. We don't have as many followers as tonight. We normally have quite a bit. Yeah, um, share it, man. Yeah, make sure you share it, it, like it, subscribe. Make sure you subscribe to our brand new podcast YouTube, uh, Facebook page, as well as check out the motostopshow.com and link to our YouTube page. Like, subscribe, because you'll get more stuff in our YouTube videos than you'll get live on Facebook. I didn't know if you knew that. Did you know that? No. Now you do. All right. Perfect. Always informed. So, uh, always informed. So, back to Marvin Muskin. Muskin. Marvin the Moosey Cat. <laughs> the Moosey Cat the or the Pussy cat? cat? The Moosey Cat. The Pussy Cat. Well, he's pulling over now. You know? Hey, he's a pussy. I mean, Man, uh, I wouldn't have seen that pit board. I'd have to get that one. So, for a 
Factory Rider, Marvin Muskin, Ryan Dungey, Eli Tomac, you name it, Justin Barsha. For them to win a race, do you know what that would probably, their win bonus would probably come out to be? What's up there? I'm saying probably between, on their level, 75 and 110,000. Wow. 75 and 110,000 dollars. One win, one more lap to go, and Marvin Muskin, who's probably a millionaire, already has enough money, but another $100,000 isn't easy to swallow, you know, no, losing it. No, So most mechanics um, have a win bonus in their contract. If not, they have a, you know, most they know if, you know, their rider wins that they will get something. And we just had Luke Finer's Finance, the number 103 over there. And my hey buddy, executive director out. wrote it in the finest red pen that you could possibly have. I don't know how we could even possibly see that, but thank God I put my contacts in. Thank so, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you, buddy. John Mortenberg said Red Bull probably paid for him pulling over. Well, no questions. Marvin still got paid. But unless somebody tells the mechanic, the mechanic's not going to know, hey, we're going to get paid if you lose. You got to know, somebody comes over the walkie-talkie and says, um, it may be a wise career move for you if you want to ride KTMs much longer to let Ryan Dungey pass you. Uh, check one, two. Tell your boy to pull over. <laughs> Roger that. I'll hit him with the pit board Tim the next Mac, time. Tim Mac just hit the dirt. We just sealed the deal. Yes. Pull over. So. I'm pretty sure that's how it went down. There, there came some orders. I yeah, truly believe. Definitely. Something was said, whether it was Roger DeCosta on the microphone. It said the first day of the first meeting that they ever had before the season even started. It could have been. Look, bro. We're here to win the championship. Just like you said, you know. Yeah. You break it down like that. And I'm sure Roger DeCosta breaks it down finer tunes it than anyone in the industry, and that's why he is who he is, and he is the man. He's the man. He's the man. So uh, John Mortenberg, like you said, Red Bull probably paid for it. Yeah, without a doubt. I'm sure either Ryan Dungey probably covered, uh, you know, whatever is going to be messed up, um, or Rudy. KTM stepped up for sure and paid his win bonus. Uh, I'm sure he's not without any money as far as that goes. Now, are you so, okay with it? With what? With him pulling over. No, I would I would have went. I would have went. I would have been like, dude, I'm I'm not pulling. But this, you and a person would have went. But what do you think about the overall? Like, do you think that's how he might, sport he might is? be smarter than me? I mean, I would have went. I'd have been like, dude, I'm not pulling over, dude. Peace out. Yeah, peace out. I just beat everybody. I just beat Toe Mac, this guy that's supposed to be a god, and I just beat Dungey, the guy that's supposed to be Mr. Reliable. I just waxed them both. I'd have I'd have checked out on them. So here's my if I ever had that ability. Here's my thoughts on this year. This was a day race. Prime time, Fox Sports 1. Not even on a secondary channel. We have a lot of casual fans watching this. Yes. And it looked, and maybe, I, maybe again, so maybe my, my opinion and my uh, thought inside this is a little jaded because I ride and I know, but anybody that watched the race knew Marvin Muskin clearly did yeah. it on purpose. Yeah, I just gave it away. So if a casual fan was watching that, do you think they know that he – Clearly pulled over with the announcer. I'm sure they're saying what's up. Yeah, so now we have this. So I, I'm okay with it again. But I think, man, Marvin Muskin, you need to take acting lessons or something. Like, you got to figure this thing out, dude. You, you got to, you know, not make it look so obvious. Or just make it look obvious one way or the other. Because I'll tell you, Denver, Colorado. Jace Owens. Yes. Coming down to the Las Vegas Finals coming up this weekend coming up, Jace Owens gets into second place behind his teammate, comes down to the last lap. Guess what his teammate does? He jumps the triple. He waves to the inside. He goes to the loop section. He pulls over and looks over at him like, there you go. Like, point blank, no, oh, let me miss this rut up. Flat corner, inside rut, <clears throat> like almost run off the track like he's never rode a dirt bike before. So... Nothing was said about that. Nothing was said in the Amsoil Arena Cross team tactics. That's what it's there for. That's what your teammates are there for. But then you go to this 
the big grand scheme of things, the Supercross. Poi Dog says, as a fan, I thought Mooskin. Hey, is there any way we could scroll these uh, comments back down or no? I didn't get to read it. They're going fast to the Poi Dog one right there. Thank you. As a fan, I thought Mooskin would have been stronger all season, would have loved to see him win, but I have no problem seeing the team work together. Love, love it, Poi Dog. So let me elaborate on that a little bit. Do you think Ryan Dungey truly won this championship? Ask you yeah, that. I mean, yeah, he, he, he won it, no doubt, but he, his teammate helped out big time. Well, I so, mean, he hasn't won it yet. So here's he what I'm saying, okay? He can bust his ass tomorrow and uh, <laughs> not even make the show. So. With Marvin, if Marvin didn't get sick those two races. <laughs> yes, Marvin might be up in the mix. You know, he got a 16th, I think, one time, or 15th one time. I mean, that would have gave him... Marvin right now is 292 to 332, so... Oh, yeah, he'd be in there. He'd be in there. Without a doubt, he would, you could only assume he would have got maybe... 15 more points, right? Yes. Or 30 more points, two yes. races yes. down. So he'd he would have right been right there. Yeah, he'd be in there. All right? With that win this weekend, he may yeah. have been winning. Yes, sir. If Eli Tomac <coughs> didn't have the brake malfunction, and, uh, what was that, Texas? Anyways. I don't remember, I don't remember what you're talking about. Would, <clears throat> he would have won. He, obviously, he would have won it easily. So to me, like, obviously I'm a Cali guy, I'm a little jaded, but I don't think, Ryan Dungey's going to take the title home, I do believe, but I don't think he was the championship rider this year. Mm -mm. Just my thoughts. Right, it's Mr. Mr. Reliable once again. Point Dog says it, I think KTM won. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> they did, they're the winners for sure, without a doubt, without a doubt. All right, so as we dive deeper into this show here, coming up on an hour mark, the producer and the executive director are looking at me like I'm going crazy. Um, Tomac's going to win the cash this weekend from Chris Moody, buddy. Tomac is? What are you saying? Tomac's going to win the cash. Tomac's going to do a stand out in Las Vegas. Moody's calling the bluff here. Yeah, you're putting your money on Tomac, huh? I like it. Dungy has to finish fourth or better if Tomac wins. Is it fourth or fifth? Uh, I'm not even going to try to do the math. Yeah, it's fourth or fifth place, though. So... All right, our so, Grind MX Rider of the Week. Who was it? What did Jim Arbo Nasty say? Are he, you tuned in, Jim? Jim's Jim. on. Jim's on. I know he is. All right. What did he say? He said Ryan Dungey. He loves Dungey. So I had to think about this one. Right. What would make the defending champion fifth is a tie, Tomac wins? That's what I thought, John. So what would uh, make... The defending champion who had a okay ride, the Grind MX Rider of the Week. Here's what I came up with. As always, we know Ryan Dungey's consistent. Right. He's been grinding out week in, week out, week in, week out, week in, week out, without getting worse results uh, than he has to. And saying that, like, you know, he eliminates his problems, he minimizes his problems to, you know, a second, third, fourth at the worst where you have Eli Tomac, who we're going to talk about his ride, but Eli Tomac, when he went down, he was very casual to get back up. Casual. Yeah, taking his time. Now, I was listening to some other stuff and said the only people, the problem is that Dungey hasn't had a fifth in years. You're absolutely correct, but... Vegas, weird stuff happens. You should have seen what happened at New York Supercross this year. It was friggin' crazy. Um, so I had to break this fall down, think about it in depth, and try to put myself in a position. And maybe if Damian Plotz is on here, Damian, maybe you can tell me I'm ludicrous, or maybe you can tell me I, I thought this through and I'm actually very intelligent, which we know is not true, but um, whatever. Dallas Abbott says, is Dungey the new Rowdy Sparks <coughs> from the movie Supercross? He is, Rowdy. He he was he was out of his element when he got back up. He was. He I mean it looked like he didn't even know how to start the bike. Well, here's what I think. So I watched a bunch of crash. I went back and I watched pros crash and I watched like three digit number guys crash. And I heard somebody say when a three digit number guy crashes, they're the only people that jumps up, gets back to their bike as fast as they can, and gets back on it. Yeah. I almost think 
that Eli Tomac being a pro and keeping calm affected him in a different way and hurt him in this crash. Yeah. Because what happens when you crash? Your heart rate peaks. Yes. You jump back on your bike. You're mentally not there. Slam. You, you make Slam. more mistakes. Right. So I feel like Eli Tomac did everything he should have did but pick his bike up faster because he fell down. It looks like he was calm, cool, and collective. Grabbed his bike, picked it up, was breathing, keeping his heart yeah. rate low and controlled. I think he thought he was fixing to run him down. He did. And then he didn't have his groove. You know, I've, I've been on the bike that the way before. I've showed up before where, man, the whole way to the track, I was going to kill it. And then after practice, I was like, holy shit. I've I, I witnessed those days. <laughs> Whoa. I've witnessed those am days. I, am I fixing to race my dirt bike today? <laughs> Carl showed up to the track. He's like, man, it's good. I'm going to go. He comes back one lap later and already wadded himself. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I've been there, bro. Ah, the good times. Mm. John Moorberg says, Grant... Now know how to punt riders over the berm, though. Yes. He's, but, good, at, he's good at that. But, so I wanted to elaborate on that. Josh Grant, Eli Tomax, and some... Oh, I got too many things going on in my head. The damn announcers. They kept saying, Eli Tomax out here by himself. Eli Tomax doesn't have help. Ryan Dungey has Marvin Muskin. Eli Tomax doesn't... Well, there's two riders on that team. Yes. Which is Josh Grant. Josh Grant was in front of him. What do you mean he doesn't have help? But he didn't get help. Yes. So Josh structured Grant, a little different. Uh, I mean, I think if you're Kawasaki. You don't got Roger. That's Roger DeCosta, man. That I, seems gelled, bro. I guess, I guess, You're not man. getting in there. Um, what, uh. I mean, that's the difference. So what place did, uh. What place did Josh Grant finish? Fifth? Where is Grant here? Uh, seventh. Seventh and yep. Eli got eighth. So it's one point difference there. Um, I mean, just like John said, when they go into Vegas, if they tie, obviously it goes to Tomac for the wins, but that definitely could have helped. It would have uh, could have made a difference where Dungey would have had to get third. Then we're talking about a completely different bike. Um, yeah, Chris Moody says when he jumped the, the case double on the triple, the bike shut off. Um, Can't got, be doing that. I don't know you're what Eli, happened. You're Eli Tomac, bro. He, Can't be doing that. I, I've never seen somebody case a, well, yeah, I did. Michael Essie, last year, case that triple. Just as bad as, and uh, Ken Roxon. But Eli Tomac comes up the face. Literally didn't even have enough speed to hit the double. Like, I, I feel like the bike didn't have power. Grant's going to take five out this week in Cali orders. Yeah. I, I'm telling you what, if he does it, <coughs> he don't, he's not riding to Cali next year, right? That's I right, mean, I, I hate Try. to say it. But, yeah. All right, where's my nose? So, back to the grindmx.com, our grind rider of the week. Ryan Dungey. Dungey. Um, he really became the grind rider of the year putting in that solid result, putting himself in position, even if he was in second place, I think he would still win this without those three points given. But he put himself in position to let his teammate allow him to go by. So you guys, uh, big shout-out to Grind and Mex for the mutual respect and allowing us to have a grindandmex.com rider. Grind all day long. John Mortberg says, look like he hit the back break up the face to me. Could have been dragging ruts, dragging pegs up the face. Um... To me, it, there was something wrong with the bike. It wasn't rideable like Eli Tomac because the ruts, the gnarly stuff, that is an Eli Tomac track if I've ever seen one. He should have dominated that track, and it wasn't there for this, for this weekend. Now, as we go into Vegas, this weekend's coming up, last round of the Monster Energy Supercross, Las Vegas. Eli Tomac, we know, has to get fifth place... Um, or Dungey's got Eli's got to win. Dungey's got to get fifth or fourth. It's going to be a hard slick track as always. Well, unless it's a mudder like last year, um, which again, John, you were there last year. What? Give us uh, some sand sections, man. Sand sections. Sand sections. Sand sections. So anything could happen. We're going to Vegas, like we just said. Your money is on who? Most can. Most can. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm uh, 
I'm thinking Tomac's gonna pull it out. I think Tomac's gonna shine. I think Tomac's, uh, Dungey's gonna finish right behind him. I think Tomac's gonna win it and uh, Dungey. Check out my boy right Ben Bass. Him. JS7 next weekend would be sick. Uh, hey, we're all e praying for what that. What if Eli one. Tomac calls James Stewart and says, look, $100,000, come out here, T Bone, Ryan Dungey, like he did you in the first corner, and I'll give you whatever millions, millions of dollars. That'd be epic, wouldn't it? Awesome. What if, you know, Justin Hill already wrapped up? The 250 West title. I'm going to ride a 450, huh? What if Get Kawasaki said, let's throw you on throw there. Throw a dog a bone. We need help. Go out and help Eli Tomac. What if? Let's go race Dungey, brother. I think we could do it. Yeah. I think we could do it. We could find. Hey, Damian Plotz. He's a great starter. He's a Cowie guy. Damian, can you get a whole shot and take somebody out? An orange bike in the first corner? I'll set this up for Cowie, okay? I'll be the, what's the person that calls the, the, the sharpshooter or the hitman? Yeah, I'm going to be the, the coordinator between the hitman and the person getting hit. We just need a Kawasaki that's not Eli Tomac to take out, he needs to be a direct missile to. A two, direct missile. Yes, two white, two, CJ, two CJ orange needs a bikes. projectile. I, yes. We need, Just a projectile. We don't even need to do anything but project yourself into dungeon. Well, we have the cannons already, which are Kawasaki's. Oh, oh, man. So we need you to take out a white bike, Anderson, Ooh. and two orange bikes. And maybe, I love Zacho, but somebody take him out of the 250 class just so he can't come into the 450 class too. <coughs> Fatty! <laughs> Look at Moody calling out Uncle Fatty. Fatty yep. will do it. Fatty on the 292, baby. There you go. All right, so we're, we're getting deep into this show. Uh, man, Las Vegas Finals coming up. It will be Friday night will be the Las Vegas Arena Cross Amsoil Finals. Yes. Uh, and... That actually is coming down to a nail biter as well. As they go into the last round, they did a re rewind, right, on all they, the points. They did. So who came out on top now? Faith. Gavin Faith's going in with 163 wow. points. Wow, Owen had it before, right? Jace so Owen was very him down dominant. To third. He's eight points back. Now it's funny. It seems like people that actually race are all pulling for T Tomac. Dungey fans are mostly on the brand, the bandwagon. <laughs> I, I'll stay off that one, Ben, because, uh, yeah. Word. We'll just say word on that one. I concur. I concur. So, in your Ricky Carmichael race to the Amsoil Arena Cross Cup, Gavin Faith leading us at 163 points. Uh, Chris Blos, 158 points. Jace Owen going in, 155. He's eight points back. And that's really your race right now because the next one is going to be Daniel Hairline, and he's 123rd, which is 40 points back. And now, Stank Dog there running in fifth, man. Don't forget old Stank. Stank Dog, dude. Hey, you. Let me break these top three down, and we'll talk a little bit about Stank Dog real quick. And we're gonna right. we're not gonna be on here much longer, guys. They're yelling at me. What am I getting? <laughs> I got a angry face that says "Hurry over here." I do what I want. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> That's my Can note. You edit the show. <laughs> I do it. I'm editing it right here. I give you a live production right here. Hey. Look, we need to hear from you guys on Facebook Live. Do you want us to stop now or keep going? If it's, you guys tell us. I'm getting yelled at, so. All right, so as they go into this, uh, this last round, it, uh, it's not like Supercross. There's a way to make up points because there will be, you the know, the head-to-head, -head, uh, points for winning the, I believe you get a points for winning the heat race as well. Yes. So there's, eight points is very easily to do with two main events. They said, tell them whatever. Tell him about the hat, CJ. <laughs> Theron Moss says, keep going, and I believe everything Theron says. Gary right. Blackledge says, I'm learning stuff, keep going. Robert Pixton says, keep going. Boy Dog says, go for gold. Yes, we Give love me a our call fans. and we can go for hours. Damien said, he's on his way up here right oh. now. I'm in my frozen voice. That's Let right. it go. Ben Bass says, Barap, do we get our point across? <laughs> Thank Motor you, guys. Stop. I probably will be locked out of the production room yeah. next week. So uh, We're going to get evicted. <laughs> We're going to get evicted. <laughs> They're Lights shutting out. us down. Lights out. <laughs> yes. One yes. hell of a production here, big deal. <laughs> He's going the distance. 
All right, so, uh, yeah, I just lost. You guys ruined my whole train of thought, but that's okay. Yes. We're going to drop right back in. <laughs> so, Jake Solon, who was dominant for the first part of the, the series, goes in, resets. Now, he did have a points lead, but had... <laughs> not saying it, Theron, not saying it. <laughs> They're laughing. So, uh, he did have a points lead, but had some... Mount uh, hard races and drop them back down to there. He's hating it. He's hating it. He's hating. Do you remember it. last year? I remember when you asked me when you said, "What do you think about this flip?" And I said, "If I was Jace Owen, I'd be I would so be pissed. Freaking I'd be out. mad as hell." But last year it was a crash, smash, bash, For the trash. Do anything else that starts with Ash at the race. The, the two came together. Um, Gavin Faith and I can't believe uh, I'm forgetting Blows. the other name. Blows. Blows. Yeah. Came together and I think Blows actually broke his water pump, not even able to finish the race. Uh. So, <laughs> hey, T Dog, photographers got to watch out for each other. Yeah, these guys go back to back on us. T Dog's mine I, for life, brother. Yeah, I know. T Moss. Tell Carl about the X on the hat, not the last round. Last round. Oh, he because I wasn't at the last ah! round. I'm going to water this way. I won't be at the next one either. I maybe. had to put. I had to put. You have to shoot me. Yeah, I had to put duct tape <laughs> over my my hat because my sponsor wasn't there to represent. And hey, uh, you know we're just showing that love, man. I, I have my hat. Nephew, my, baby. I have my live ruthless hat on. I did pick on you. I did talk mad Why shit. Why not? I talked mad shit on you. Hey, it happens. And I hate like it's because I love you. When you're not there, I get mad at you. I, hey, I'm with it. I love you. Yes. Any moment I and can really be there, is because, I'll be there. Really it's because he normally has the Jack Daniels for me, and I didn't have any Jack Daniels, Yay! so I started getting angry. But, all right, so Jared Steinke aboard, got that ride of Babbitt's Kawasaki. Yes. Stank dog. Stank dog. Put himself in fifth P place U. there. Great ride, but... Uh, He's a character, man. Great guy. Dude, character you say says nothing about him. He's battling out with his, like... Smash, crash, bash with yeah. his teammate. Yeah, he don't care, dude. He's not. He doesn't no, care when he's. He's unemployed. no moose game. He's no pussy cat. <laughs> he's gonna be unemployed next yes. year. So he's gonna back to the. What, I'll employ a buddy if I have a ride. We'll two give strokes. It to you. Stanker. Hey, Wasco's got a one twenty five. Whatever he needs. Yeah, Wasco. Can we, can we throw Wasco's? Stank Dog on that thing, brother? BBT, you up for uh, maintaining that after Stank Dog runs Where two thirty BBT minute at motos out there at freaking Southwick on that one twenty five? Oh, man, that's awesome. Horrible. Horrible. I liked how Renner did the 125 at Daytona one time, too. That was pretty cool. Renner tried to qualify on one. Um, anything else, guys? Uh, last, we're going to wrap this up in about two minutes. If you guys don't give us any other comments, we'll, uh, we'll say our peace out. Don't forget to tune in. Axel Boner will be there. Gary Blackledge, the, or Gary Blackledge's father. Gary Blackledge is the father of Hunter Blackledge, Axel Boner, said he's coming. We'll get it right. We'll get it right. Um, a, a super fast rider, the number 34 out there. Yeah, he's um, been ripping Who does that, good. Though. Beck will get it in tune by the weekend. Cool. Beck's tag. We're looking forward to it. Uh, seems like it's a weekly thing, and I know I talked to Dave a little bit off. They think that actually the back of the shock or the shock was uh, messed up from the manufacturer there. They're trying to figure it out and get it dialed in. So he's got Bex Tech out there helping him get it hooked up, dialed in. All right. How y'all doing? Well, How y'all doing? Episode 20, 22 has came and gone. Make sure you check out all the racing action in the state of Florida. Make sure you tune in tomorrow night, 8 o'clock, over at NDA Action Sports. Paul Fleming, Poi Dog. Poi Dog. Going to give you all the local news on our local races, local action sports. Dude, they, they're like live ruthless. They're yes, into it. Yes, Love into it. it. They do a lot of cool stuff. So, uh. Carl, are you, Carl, are you going to be? No, he won't. He won't. Nope, he won't be at Dade City. Carl Ruthless stop, will not be at Dade it, City. Stop it. So uh, we got to thank, as always, our Big Woo! Deal Productions, Tom, Brian. Make That's sure you check them out. Deal. Make sure you check out their everything they do. They got that really cool um, YouTube in the channel. YouTube channel, Big Deal Production. But they do in the life of a uh, production life, which is cool. This last episode, they split up. It shows you how this... The little company that has grown so fast and grown so big actually works in the background. They had too many jobs as they have the last few weekends, so they have to split up now, divide. You know, one takes motocross and one goes over here, and I don't really know what he did. Set in a, 
air conditioned room all weekend, but make sure you check it out. It was really cool. Uh, hard workers, and I, I couldn't do what I do without you guys. We appreciate it. So, as always, we got to thank a lot of our sponsors, LiveRuthless.com, sponsoring the yes, show. Sir. We appreciate Carl you, Ruthless man. for coming in. Uh, Loudmouth Intakes. And everybody else that supports us, thank you. All the people that jumped on our Grind Facebook MX. Live. GrindMX.com. Damien Plots MX. Make sure you guys share, subscribe, like, let us know what you think. And uh, go over, even if you don't watch our YouTube page, go over, click it, like it. We got to build that as well as this Facebook so we can continue to do this. All right. It's been real. It's been fun. From Carl Rutledge, Liv Ruthless, CJ Harris, the Motostop Trackside Parts, your host right here at the Motostop Show in the Butte Deal Studios. It's been fun. It's been real. Yes, we sir. out. We're out. Peace.